Hey, how everybody, it's Otran here, and we are back with some more Library of Ruina guides. This time I will be covering the new exclusive combat pages of the Disordered Liberation Ensemble. I've already covered the non-exclusive pages in two of my previous videos, links to them are in the description. Today's video is about the exclusive high-cost pages of the Disordered Liberation Ensemble. I'll explain the effects of each page and when to use it, and then I'll compare all of them. Without further ado, let's start with Philip. Philip's page is Flames of Despair. While this isn't a high cost page by itself, it gives the user a 5 cost mass attack page Scotch and Desperation. But keep in mind that Scotch and Desperation is only given at emotion level 3 or higher. Flames of Despair also inflicts 1 burn to all enemies in emotion level 3 or higher. This effect is likely applied to instantly boost the power of Scotch and Desperation by 1. As for the mass attack page itself, next scene after using Flames of Despair, Phil will strike a cool pulse and obtain Scotch and Desperation, a 5 cost mass attack page with a 13 to 20 pierce die that inflicts 3 burn on hit. While the role seems underwhelming, keep in mind that it's individual, not summation. If Scotch Desperation isn't used on the scene it was obtained on, it exhausts. Next up is Aileen, and her page, Thought Gear Indoctrinate. This page is also a mass attack, with two individual 5 to 9 pierce dice. If any of the dice hit, all other allies restore one light. Note that hitting with both dice does not stack the effect. Thought Gear Indoctrinate is usable on and after the first team, so I will usually get access to it earlier than Phil's Scotch Desperation. After use, the page exhausts and only returns to hand after 4 scenes. You can use Sword Gear Indoctrinate as a scene 3 light recover, but by this time scene 7 starts, the 5 to 9 dice aren't going to be enough. Greta's page is a little different from what you have previously seen. Tackle Mount is a melee combat page, not a mass attack. It has a very strong lead on blunt die with a roll range of 11 to 15, and 3 additional weak 3 to 5 dice after that. While it seems like Tackle Mount just loses all clashes other than the first one at first, keep in mind that the first die destroys all dice on the opponent's patient clash win, so the three dice afterwards are supposed to deal damage and heal. By the way, all dice on the page recover 3 HP and hit, and the damage of the last three dice increases by the amount of bleed on target. With that in mind, we can see that Tackle Mount only has to win the first clash to recover 12 HP and deal enormous damage if running host floor with a bleed team. Another note is that the last 3 dice cannot clash with anything, as all the other dice on the opponent's page are destroyed. This matters because the opponent won't lose their bleed stacks, as they are not playing any offensive dice. Back to mass stacks we have Bremen, his exclusive page, course as the climax, has the same use conditions as Aline's Sword Gear Indoctrinate. However, Bremen's page has higher rolls and a very different ability. On use, course as the climax inflicts 2 fragile to all enemies. The page's 2 blunt dice inflict 1 paralysis next scene each. Keep in mind that Bremen's page costs 6 light, so it is more difficult to use right away than Eileen's page. The main effect of this page cripples your enemies, first as will define the Bremen's niche as a debuff room. Next up we have Oswald and his exclusive page Climax, and of course our favorite clone gets a meme page. Oswald's page is another mass attack, this time it's a summation roll. Climax has the highest top roll of all mass attack pages of the game, a weapon 50, but in return Oswald but in return, Oswald gets the lowest bottom roll of all mass attack pages, a pitiful 1. Oswald also inflicts a random status effect to all targets in use. What's important here is that Climax inflicts both negative and positive effects to the enemies, so the page is a complete wheel of fortune. The last effect of Climax is deal 8 stagger damage to the enemies on hit, but it gets overshadowed by the amount of stagger damage you'll take in real life, watching as Oswald gives protection stack protection to all enemies and then proceeds to roll a single digit value. Next, we have Tanya. Similar to Greta's Tackle Mount, Tiny Speech Black Pulverizer is a melee page. It has two 13 to 20 blunt dice and a 6 to 10 block die at the end. The first and second blunt dice deal 5 additional stagger damage and physical damage respectively. Just like Tackle Mount, this page costs 6 light and its use isn't restrained by anything other than your light capacity. The question, of course, is if Pitch Black Pulverizer is better than Beatdown or Overspeed. The short answer is yes. The new page deals much more damage than Beatdown because of the higher total roll value and additional damage and hit. As for well speed, Peach Black Pulverizer is just an upgraded version of it. The only downside is the slightly higher cost, but the damage output is worth that 6 light. Now we have Jay Hyun and his page Straining Strings. It is once again a mass attack page with the same use condition as Aliens and Bremen's pages, and it once again has two individual dice. This time the dice are two 6 to 10 pierce dice that inflict bind on hit. On use, the ally with puppeteer strings recover 20 HP in stagger. The page is very similar to Bremen's, but its effect is a bit flipped. While Kirk's as a climax strongest effect is applied on hit, and the news effect is supplementary. Strain strings applies to the most important effect, healing, or news, and has bind and hit on top of that. The unused ability of this page further solidifies Jay Hyun's role as a support character. 
Our next subject is Elena. Her new page, Unending Thirst, is a yet another two individual dice page that's only usable on and after the third scene and returns to hand every four scenes afterwards. But unlike the other pages of this type, Unending Thirst doesn't have two equal dice. The first slash on this page is 6 to 9, while the second one is a whole 8 to 19. One hit the second die recovers 3 HP, so you can get up to 15 HP from one use. If Yelena has recovered 20 or more HP this act, the cost of this page is lowered by 2. When compared to Yelena's further close of pages plus spreading, Unending Thirst has higher consistency with its damage output and is reusable although only every 4 scenes. Paired with the cost lowering effect, Unending Thirst easily overthrows blood spreading. Next up is Pluto and his absolute garbage of a page, Deluge of Brachial Quietuses. I call this page garbage partially because it's a brave page and partially because he have to pronounce its name. The page has the usual use conditions, costs 6 light and has 3 dice unlike the other 2 dice pages of such type. The dice are a pair of 5 to 8 dice, one of which is pierced and the other one is slashing, followed by a 4 to 7 pierced die. The page has no special abilities and can be rightfully called the worst page of all of the Europe Ensemble. What a coincidence it is that the same can be said about Pluto, its user. And now we proceed to Argalia. As the orchestrator of the ensemble, Agalia gets 3 pages instead of 1. These pages are Controlled Resonance, Crescendo and Grand Finale. Controlled Resonance is not even close to, the, to a Mastec page and only costs 1 light. It has a Blunt and a Slash and Die, both of which have a roll value of 3 to 8. The true effectiveness of this page lies in its Combat Slide effect. For the scene on which Controlled Resonance was used, Agalia's passive Resonance activates if the target has 4 or more vibration. This page greatly improves any Agalia deck, as it basically gives you plus 2 power and guaranteed page throw on all pages. If you've used Allegro on the target last scene, an argument can be made about using control resonance over as that size, as a scene on plus 2 to all dice is usually much more effective than a plus 4 boost to one page. Agala's second new page is Crescendo. Similar to most of the previously mentioned pages, Crescendo can only be used on and after the third scene. This page has two individual dice, a 6 to 10 pierce die and a 9 to 22 slashing die. The last die on the page deals 50% more damage if the first die connected. Unlike the other Mastic pages, Crescendo does not return to hand after one use, it exhausts permanently. But instead of it, Agalia gets a new page, Green Finale. Green Finale is Agalia's third and last exclusive page. It is once again a 6 cost Mastic, but unlike Crescendo, it has one summation die. The die is a 30 to 40 pierce die, which is just barely weaker than Gabriel's greatest weak horizontal. Grand Finale has no unusual use conditions and doesn't exhaust from the deck. This page has the highest spamming potential out of all the new pages, but we'll have to find a reliable way to restore all out of light. And now, it's time to compare all the pages. The point of the comparison is to figure out which pages can make the most impact on the field, and which pages you should avoid so you don't waste enormous amounts of light for nothing in return. Let's break the pages down into types to compare them easily. First, one day Mastex Philip, Oswald, and Argalia. Second, individual Mastex. Eileen, Bremen, J. Hyon, Yelena, Pluto, and Regali again. Third, melee pages, Greta and Tanya. Starting with one day mass text, we can see that Philip's page has an individual role, unlike Oswald's and Regali's summation pages. This lands Philip above Oswald, as his attack is infinitely easier to hit. Between Regali and Oswald, Regali's grand finale is a clear winner. It's much more consistent in every way possible. Both Philip and Argala are gimmicky pages, so choose Philip if you run on Mercus floor and Argala in literally every other situation. In the individual Mastic bracket, the comparison is much closer. While Pluto's page falls down as the worst page of this reception, all the other ones stand strong. Yelena's unending thirst and Argala's crescendo are compared separately. If we don't take Grand Finale into the equation, unending thirst is the winner, but due to Argala's sheer versatility, I recommend taking him. Eileen, Bremen, and J. Hyon all have two day support Mastex. Eileen's sword gear in Tokrenate provides a slight light region to the entire team, but its attacks are difficult to land, and when they do, they don't deal much damage or even use impactful effect. That makes Eileen less desirable than Bremen or J. Hyon. Between the last two, it's up to you to choose. One has strong debuffs, the other heals an ally. Between Tanya and Greta, it depends on your team and preferred flow. If you're running a full unity team, go Tanya for higher damage output. If you are a fan of Hot's flow, you might like building out your enemies and then crushing them with greatest tackle mount afterwards. Overall, the pages are fun to use and have some incredible animation. While I am kind of upset over not getting pages of the head, these pages definitely deserve being the final combat pages of the game. And that's all I have to say about the exclusive pages of the Distorted Vibration Ensemble. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, hit the like button and check out some of my other videos. You might find something that you like. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.